Hi, everyone. Can you guys hear me uh, all right? Uh, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, Korean uh, students from our uh, collaborator from uh, Hanyang University and the Busan National University. Uh, they stay here for uh, about six uh, weeks. Uh, from January to uh, February, and then they uh, they went here uh, another trip last year, uh, December. So total they stay in uh, about ten weeks, and then they made a, a lots of progress on their uh, uh, project. And then uh, we have a uh, two student here. Uh, Myungjun is the second year from the uh, Busan University, and then uh, Sumin is. Uh, first year graduate student from Hanyang University, and uh, we will talk about the uh, pressure induced uh, temperature uh, based transition of the uh, organic inorganic hybrid uh, perovskite. So we can start with uh, Myungjun first. Okay, that's right, Yeah. Thank you, and good afternoon, and thank you for participating this meeting. And my name is Myungjun, and today I talk about uh, walking in APX almost three months. So we measured a lot of things using the Rama spectroscopy, and I want to share the result. Uh, the title is Pressure and Temperature Induced Phase Transition and Turning of Physical Property in Organic Inorganic Hybrid Ferro Scale. So <clears throat> let's start. I will start from the background of my research topic. Uh, perovskite structure typically have an ABX3 structure, and normally A and B have uh, some metal ion, and X is uh, oxygen. Uh, and normal inorganic perovskite gets some um, various useful properties, such as like ferroelectric or outstanding optical property to use um, waveguide or other things, or special magnetic properties, such as like chiral spin configuration or other things. Also, this structure can change with the organic cation. If the A site comprises um, organic molecules while the uh, B denotes uh, some transient metal and X is halide, then it refers to the organic inorganic hybrid ferroskite. Particularly within the organic inorganic hybrid ferroskite, it is easy to modify the dimensionality of inorganic octahedra by changing the organic cation. Uh, at the A site. So it is great playground to exploring changing physical property due to the dimensionality. Also, due to the soft composition of the organic molecules, uh, organic inorganic hybrid ferroskite have a many structure based transition with the external environment conditions such as a temperature. So there are possibility that it can be very sensitive to external pressure, specifically in the case of the 3D. In the white HP, it is exhibit um, outstanding photovoltaic effect, and 2D have some uh, unusual magnetic or electric property, and 1D and 0D showcase some quantum dot or light emitting diode. So we choose the two dimensional system. We focus on the unusual electric and magnetic property of the quasi two dimensional organic inorganic hybrid battle sky. Specifically, organic cation is PA, which means pan amine, which means C6H5, CH2CH2, and NH3. C6H5 is this ring, and CH2CH2 and NH3. And metal ion is uh, copper and manganese, and halogen is fluoride. In copper based material, in here, PA2, copper tetrachloride, uh, have a copper tetrachloride octahedral structured layer like this. and. Uh, between the copper tetrachloride layer, there are some uh, organic cation PEA. So the metal halide octahedral layer was separated with the PEA cation and reason of the extensively long length of the PEA molecule, there have a long gap between the layer and layer, almost two nanometer. Uh, so the layer is almost independent and uh, they is, uh, this is why the material have a positive two dimensional structure and uh, properties. Uh, similarly, in the PA2 magnetic tetrachloride uh, and also magnetic tetrachloride octahedral layer between the PA cation, almost same structure with the PA2 carbon tetrachloride. This quasi two dimensional structure have a stand out in the magnetic property uh, because original the magnetic moment is a metal ion. So in the PA2 carbon tetrachloride have a so quasi two dimensional Heisenberg ferromagnetic ordering such as this thing. 
near uh, fuel temperature is near the tank Kelvin, and in plane direction they have uh, some ferromagnetic ordering, and out of plane they have some anti a weak anti ferromagnetic ordering, and and in the Pa two magnetic tetra chloride they have uh, some Jose two dimensional Heisenberg anti ferromagnetic system, so they have a near temperature near the forty four Kelvin, and they have a uh, out of plane anti ferromagnetic ordering, and uh, in plane have a very weak ferromagnetic ordering, and we can see there are some hysteresis is very weak ferromagnetic, and also in the outer plane, they have some spin plot transition, like uh, in near the 3.5 tesla. So, okay, let's see more detail of the magnetic origin of this material. So, in the PA2 copper tetrachloride, this is positive two dimensional Heisenberg ferromagnetic. This magnetic ordering is came from the structure in the copper tetrachloride of tetra, distorted from the NHCl hydrogen bonding, it makes some um, D4H distorted octahedra state and make a young tail distortion. You can see this is uh, NH3 and octahedra and NNH and Cl. They have a hydrogen bonding and distorted system. As in the figure, they have uh, only one, only kappa ion. Then D orbital energy is just same energy, but uh, in the octahedra state, OH state, then the uh, D orbital energy will split two different energy, EZ and T2G. And, uh, Additionally, more distortion due to the some hydrogen bonding than the orbital split to the five different energy state. So in this type, kappa have a the orbital is a nine field electron. So in the ground state, this uh, this make four state in the up of the here, especially in Pa two kappa tetrachloride, they have a uh, order the whole orbital state in the d x square minus g square or d y square minus g square. Uh, this ordered state of kappa and uh, near the chlorine and another kappa have a super exchange interaction. So this make a uh, in-plane ferromagnetic ordering, right? This Jan Taylor distorted octahedral ferromagnetic. Also in the Jan Taylor distortion can have uh, some transition in the D orbital because this is full state and this is full field electron. So electron can uh, transition to the here or here, here to the here. So this is called a DD transition from the Jan Taylor distortion. Also, it, uh, it makes some abnormal absorption under the band gap. And uh, next is the PA2 magma tetrachloride. Uh, this is positive two dimensional Heisenberg anti ferromagnetic material. And magnetic ordering came from the uh, manganese and chlorine and mangan super exchange interaction from here. Linear symmetry of tetra anti ferromagnetic. And but, uh, <clears throat> also symmetry, uh, similar with the kappa, manganese have also distorted. Octahedral D4H state, but uh, different in the kappa case. Mangan have only five field electrons in the D orbital, so there are no Yantel distortion. But uh, due to the distorted octahedral, spin was canting. So in this figure, that figure, there uh, you can see in plane, canted anti ferromagnetism and the weak ferromagnetic ordering due to the, the magnetic domain wall. Uh, this magnetic domain wall can be explained with the Janosinski Boria interaction of the Mangan and Mangan. Uh, anti ferromagnetic ordering. So, and also due to the spin canting, there are some spin plot transition at uh, 3.5 Tesla on the PA2 magma tetrachloride. Next is uh, some ferroelectric property and high temperature property. At the high temperature, both PA2 copper tetrachloride and PA2 magma tetrachloride have a similar phase transition called uh, some order disorder transition. This phase transition changed the organic cation structure. As a polar state, this disorder state is have a polarity, but the and the uh, uh, polar state to the central symmetric state in the order state. So yes, so uh, in the PA to kappa beta chloride, this have a, this is room temperature phase, and they have a, some disorder phase, and they have a polarity. And uh, when we get up the three hundred forty Kelvin, then uh, three hundred forty Kelvin is transient temperature, then the uh, state change to the order state, then the that system is central symmetric system, so, so there are no polarity. Similar to the Mangan system, Mangan level uh, room temperature phase is a uh, disordered state, so there are polarity, but over the 385 Kelvin, then uh, structure change to the order state, so they have uh, no polarity in there. <clears throat> Reason to the, this disorder state are polarity, they have uh, some possibility to get the uh, Ferroelectric property, and uh, in the reference, there are PA2 copper tetrachloride have a ferroelectric in the room temperature. But the PA2 magma tetrachloride, there are no 
report about the electricity. So this maybe this material can have a some better electric property or not. So we need more research about that. Uh, as in the last slide, uh, the original ferroelectric ordering in the PA2 copper tetrachloride is organic cation, specifically in the yes, specifically in the uh, NH3 in the PA is the original of the polarity like here. So uh, this part have a hydrogen bonding with the metal halide oxide through the NHCl bonding. Uh, you can see in this figure NH3 have uh, some copper tetrachloride connecting with the two hydrogen bonding. Uh, in here, one is very strong, so not can be changed, but the other one can be changed of chlorine atom with the bonding system, and they can change direction of the polarity. This polarity was uh, changed with the external electric field, and uh, it can be have some polarity, a better electric. You can see this uh, free energy diagram, they have some, Two local minimum. This is states uh refer the two different direction of the okay. Uh this uh this polarity in the PA2 copper tetrachloride was measured with uh, this temperature versus polarization that like, uh plot. Uh, so you can see uh near the room temperature 300 Kelvin, they have some polarization, but the, over the 400 Kelvin, they have no polarization. So trench to the ferroelectric to the paraelectric system, but the Amount of the polarization is too small because the polarity origin is only this NH3, so they can't be me can't measured. So such like that, uh, electric hysteresis look like this uh, external electric field versus uh, some polarization plot. But in the EA2 copper tetrachloride is similar with the PA2 copper tetrachloride. They have a low benjamin, just CH2 and CH2 and NH3, and origin is similar. In here, they can be uh, measured with the uh, uh, electric hysteresis loop at the uh, 77 Kelvin. So similar. So uh, this is the original the ferroelectric city in the PA-based posi two-dimensional organic inorganic hybrid system. So this material have also unusual magnetic properties such as a posi two-dimensional Heisenberg ferromagnetic in the PA to copper tetrachloride. And antiferromagnetic came from uh, in the PA2 magnetic tetrachloride, whereas came from the beta halide octahedra, especially in the copper case of a young halo distortion. And the room temperature ferroelectricity ordering came from the organic cation, especially this NHCl hydrogen bonding. So, my suggestion is this magnetic and electric properties coupled with uh, some other factors, such as like some stru structure or other chemical bonding, uh, then. If, if this, this is right, then uh, this material have a very big potential about the, having some large magnetic electric property and some which can be changed with the external environment condition like temperature or pressure or external magnetic field or electric field or chemical displacement or vacancy. So this is our goal. We want to fit up this diagram, uh, which uh, axis is temperature and pressure and another axis. Another axis can be some external field or other things. And we change the external environmental condition and measure Wama spectroscopy. Then we can figure out different space in the various environment. And I think we can get some information over some special properties such as chiralality feature came from the organic molecule and some spin pollen interaction or multiferroid or magnetic electric property or Changes of orbital configuration or other physical property. This research gave some information on PA based was like two dimensional organic or hybrid system. And we can utilize this material. If this material has such like upper property, then it has some huge possibility to make some non toxic, some chip to make to easy to mm -hmm. enter the other magnetic device, and some environmental friendly, uh, some next generation electric or magnetic device also can some spectronics or magnonics device can be. This is uh, one of the so, uh, such of some uh, spectronics device. This used a uh, skirmium. Uh, skirmium is a um, spin texture of the ordered state and with the uh, topological ordering. So it can be saved some information like that one and zero and one and zero, so such like that. Then. So it can make some RAM or make some logic gate. So I think we can use our material like such like that spintronics device. 
So now move to the experimental part. Uh, we made this PA-based organic inorganic hybrid ferroskite, PA2 copper tetrachloride and PA2 magnet tetrachloride using this slow evaporation method. Uh, this method is very simple. Uh, just choose solution and uh, solu solute and for the binary material and dissolve the solute in the solution and heating the solution then will be slow evaporate then the dissolved material will be participate precipitate or nucleation and can get some growth of crystal. So we choose the methanol and isopropyl alcohol as a solution and copper and manganese salt, uh, which means our uh, copper dichloride dihydrate and uh, manganese dichloride tetrahydrate and uh, base penetramine hydrochloride as solute. So we can get some transparent bright yellow colored single crystal like in the PA2 copper tetrachloride and the transparent pink colored single crystal in the PA2 malon tetrachloride. We confirm this material as a single crystal lab XRD and SCMEDS measurement and magnetic property measurement with the speed and uh, some high temperature DSC measurement. In this result, we made some project two dimensional crystal like this structure uh, from the web XRD. And there we have some project two dimensional Heisenberg ferromagnetic and antiferromagnetic ring from the magnetic measurement. So we can get some in-plane ferromagnetic ordering and out of plane some anti weak antiferromagnetic ordering hysteresis in the PA2 copper tetrachloride and in plane very weak ferromagnetic ordering and out of plane out uh, antiferromagnetic ordering and the spin flow transition near the 3.5 Tesla at the PA2 malar tetrachloride. And also not included in this slide, but we can observe some abnormal absorption in the PA2 copper tetrachloride due to the D transition from the antenna distribution. Uh, this is result in here. APS, uh, we first measure the Wama spectroscopy of the ambient sample. We can measure some different sample and find the optimal condition to measure the sample. Uh, in this model, signal can understand with the same organic molecule, uh, which over the 400 inverse centimeter is almost same, and uh, same with the tenetriamine hydrochloride. And, but the, under the 400 inverse centimeter, uh, is this part is a lattice model, so every sample is different. So in this um, calculation using the DFT or other method to figure out uh, every different vibration mode. So this is working in progress in the Korea and the Oakridge version rack in the USA. So also in the PA2 mangan tetrachloride, we can measure some photoflows in the green laser, which means uh, wavelength is 502 nanometer. It means there are some, some excitation in that wavelength and in the green laser wavelength and it, in electron wave recombination, and it also can help to understand orbital configuration in this material. So we first measure some uh, PA2 magnet tetrachloride under the high pressure. We measure the hydrostatic case and uh, non-hydrostatic case and both and using the pressure medium as a nail in the hydrostatic case. Uh, this image is our sample in the DAC. Uh, one is hydrostatic and one is non-hydrostatic. We use red razor to measure the warm signal and this is result. Uh, we can find a lot of change between the zero and the 4.36 your Pascal and uh, near the here, 23.58 your Pascal and little bit change in the 8 your Pascal and the 15 your Pascal. So we measured narrow step under the 1.36 your Pascal. So we find out uh, near the 1.69 your Pascal, there are some lot of change, change of the over the 400 inverse centimeter and also lattice mode. So we check this change in the lattice mode, a lot of change between the one zero and the 1.36 kilopascal. And uh, some people splitting and uh, some, some real sample at the, near the eight kilopascal and the 15 kilopascal, which means there are some change in the eight and 15 kilopascal. And uh, this change is almost changing with the organic cation. And next, we also tracking the narrow step Rama spectra uh, between the 0 to the 2.17 gigapascal at the 0 0.69 gigapascal. Uh, there was some arising peak like here. 
some horizon peaks and some disappearing peaks like this one and this one and some splitting in here and a uh, lot of change also uh, in the redis model a lot of change which means there are some phase transition with the changing inorganic matter halide or tetra and the organic molecule so in the high pressure mama spectroscopy measurement in of the pa2 mama tetrachloride we could see five different phase uh, at the 0.69 gigapascal, there are one phase transition which change every structure and uh, Near the 8 and 15 gigapascal, there is some one signal change, and I think this is just a change of inorganic cation. And so I think this is just a microstructure change. And uh, at the 23 gigapascal, almost every peak was disappearing and broadening. So, which means a uh, structure is crushing. And I think this is a uh, some compressed organic and uh, change to the metal halide layer to the 2D, quasi two dimensional to the 3D like system. So in this uh, calculation to fit every vibration motion, then we can understand what really happened in the A2 magnetic chloride under the high pressure. And also we have a very good chance to measure the low temperature using the liquid helium chloride credit step. Uh, we can cool down to the 41 Kelvin and this is the limit temperature using the 30 liter of the liquid helium, and which is three Kelvin lower than the near temperature of the PA2 magma tetrachloride, which is a uh, uh, near temperature is 44 Kelvin. We loaded the non-hydrostatic condition, but uh, we can't press sample because we spend every helium just three hours. So we can get some low temperature mama signal when the hitting the sample. So there are some sharpening and splitting like uh, under uh, near the uh, 100 Kelvin, that this readiness star pollen is transit to the such like some A1 symmetry to the A1 and A1 dot symmetry, or uh, E1 symmetry to the E1 and E1 dot and E1 double dot symmetry. So it seems like it's splitting. But uh, and in the 41 Kelvin, uh, under the near temperature of the PA2 magma tetrachloride, uh, we can change in the two different points. And uh, I'm not sure this is real change and real peak. Uh, it could be some cosmic noise or other things, but it can be like explanation like this. Uh, in near the 300 5 per centimeter peak, this one, there was seems like some splitting the peak. Uh, so uh, over the, uh, like this, uh, over the near temperature, octandra vibration mode is degenerated and there are just one, but in the below the near temperature, some magnetic ordering or magma and chlorine magma chain, some super exchange interaction chain broken some degenerate state and the split to different peaks. So it is why the peak splitting near the 305 inverse centimeter. Also, there are arising new peak near the 800 inverse centimeter. In this some calculation and more experiment, but uh, it seems like a new vibration mode due to the sub interaction with the inorganic octahedra and organic cation because uh, near this peak is a uh, location of the NH3 and CCC or CCN or also CC single bonding, stretching or waking mode. So, and this means there are some coupling with uh, between the metal halide magnetism and organic molecule. The peak could be understood like this way, but uh, we haven't confirmed and that this is the real peak. So in it more low temperature, experiment and the confirmation, but this is a very interesting result. If this is real peak, uh, so this is one uh, kind of some evidence of spin bone coupling. Next we, this is over mama spectral of PA2 kappa tetrachloride under the high pressure. Next we move to the PA2 kappa tetrachloride. We measure the hydrostatic and non-hydrostatic and using the neon gas as pressure medium. In the sample, we can see any peak over the 400 inverse centimeter. Uh, this reason is uh, this PA2 kappa tetrachloride sample is so sensitive and so easy to burn. So we can't get higher laser power. So we can see other peak. But uh, under the 400 inverse centimeter, uh, there are a lot of change about the lattice mode. So we can... Uh, we can see there are some phase transition near the 8 gigapascal and 15 gigapascal. There are disappearing and arising peaks. 
So they are very strange shell, and it's also needs some calculation and analysis. But uh, in the what happened in the high pressure? So this is just display drilled to the 500 inverse centimeters, and we can see a lot of change in the reddish mode. And uh, also this PA to copper tetrachloride uh, have uh, some color change when the applied pressure. This is a result of the suppression of the Yang Taylor distribution, octahedral symmetry change to the D4H to the OH step. So <clears throat> DD transition is disappearing and the uh, charge transport is more dominant. So when the gap is narrowing and the uh, color was changed, you can see yellow to the almost orange to the red to the black. And same thing is hydrostatic and non-hydrostatic. So uh, actually in here, magnetic ordering in the PA2 copper tetrachloride is uh, the order the whole state of uh, dx square minus g square or dy square minus g square order speed, uh, state. So from the Yang Taylor distribution, so this means the magnetism can be disappearing with the external pressure in the PA2 copper tetrachloride. So we tracking this peak position of the PA2 copper tetrachloride. You can see under the tangy of Pascal, there are a lot of change in the reddish mode and uh, some peak arising and disappearing and uh, splitting. So in here, there are four different phase and transition and near the 8 gigapascal and the 13 gigapascal and there are uh, some 18 gigapascal there are some microstructure change uh, in 8 gigapascal this transition there are changing uh, some some metal halide octahedral symmetry and occurring some suppression of Yang Taylor distribution and near the 18 gigapascal there are some little change with the which is similar microstructure change in the PA2 magnetic chloride and uh, near the 13 gigapascal uh, organic cation is crushing and the change to the cosine two dimensional structure to the three D like structure like PA2 magnetic chloride. Also, we measured some high temperature change in the PA2 magnetic chloride up to the 543 Kelvin using the nickel chrome wire as a heater and uh, some K-type some couples and some handmade copper cooling glove and yes and heating cells. So this PA2 copper tetrachloride have a two phase transition uh, in the 340 Kelvin and the 410 Kelvin in reference and our DSC measurement lizard. But uh, when we heat it up this <coughs> and measure the Rama spectrum then there are no change in the Rama signal. So just we can see just some um, spontaneous color change and rating at the 513 Kelvin. So I think we need some more high temperature experiment or about with the other tools such as XRD or other things. So back to the, this figure, we measured uh, and the compound this pressure Access with the PA2 copper tetrachloride and PA2 magnetic tetrachloride, we see there are four different phase and the color change in the PA2 copper tetrachloride. We, and this color change is related with the Yang Taylor distribution. In the PA2 magnetic tetrachloride, they have a five different phase, and uh, this sample is so sensitive, and a lot of things are changed near the 0 0.6 gigapascal. And we doing the this temperature axis, so. We do we the low temperature of PA2 magnetic tetrachloride. Uh, we see some arising peak under the magnetic ordering temperature 44 Kelvin. Also, we then high temperature of PA2 copper tetrachloride. We can see color change in the melting point. Also, this color change is related with the Yang Taylor distribution. I think when we fill up this phase diagram uh, in this pressure and temperature plane. And we can understand the PA based cosine two dimensional system specifically coupling of the metal halide octahedra and the organic cation, organic molecule. We expect such like this large spin polar coupling or large magnetic electric property, or at least from the chirality of the organic molecule, it can be combined with the spin polar coupling or magnetic electric property like this figure. This material is similar with the PA cation, but a little bit different. Uh, they have two different chirality, same, the same, same uh, chemical composition. But so they have a magnetic electric correlated two-dimensional chiral hydrogen ferromagnetic. 
So I expect like this thing can be happening in our system. Uh, and we search the next tab of the previous figure, focus on the color change of the PA2 copper beta chloride, which is related with the young table distortion. And we can see some change in the color uh, with the change in the temperature and pressure. And also I find when we change the chemical composition of this material, the color also changing similar with the temperature and the pressure, uh, and yes. And so we test to this and uh, made only 1% of uh, mang manganese doped PA2 copper tetrachloride single crystal, then we can see there are some similar color changes here. So next axis where we, this chemical composition to the manganese 0% to the 100%, so, and I believe this can more easily contour unique property of PGA-based organic inorganic hybrid ferrostite. So also, and uh, also we try to measure this PA2 cobalt catafluoride sample. I expected the same quasi two dimensional structure, but this material conducted with by the independent cobalt tetrachloride tetrahedral. So it have a zero dimensional structure. So it's not organic inorganic high ferroskite because not ferroskite structure, just a metal organic hybrid material. So this material reported almost nothing, just structure and magnetism, and which is paramagnet. And so we try to measure the pressure and the from a spectroscope end. Uh, this is wizard, and uh, we measure we can measure only single crystal. Uh, in the hydrostatic with the neon gas as a pressure medium. So you can see there are a lot of change near the 5 gigapascal and the 23 gigapascal. So I think uh, the material have a whole different phase. Uh, one phase transition is occurring near the 5 gigapascal and uh, again, phase transition near the 23 gigapascal and the polymerization near the 40 gigapascal. Uh, also from the near the 23 gigapascal, the sample suddenly measures in photoprocess signal, which means there are some orbital configuration change in the 23 gigapascal phase transition. So I think uh, uh, there are some tetrahedral changing phase transition. In this structure under the 20 gigapascal, there are just independent tetrahedral. In near of the 5 gigapascal, there are phase transition, but not much. Uh, but not much effect on the tetrahedra and uh, just some change in the organic and inorganic, some chemical bonding. When pressing up to the 20 gigapascal, uh, 20 gigapascal it seems there are some change in tetrahedral system, such like independent tetrahedra to the some corner sharing tetrahedra or edge sharing tetrahedra. When can uh, which can be affected uh, some, some structure dependent digital dimensional to the one dimensional or other dimension. So there are changing in the orbital configuration and uh, suddenly measured for the process. This is just uh, one possible some explanation, but uh, not be sure. So we need more measurement using the robot spectroscopy or XRD or other things. So this is summary of the, my presentation. We expected some large coupling between the metal halide oxide and the organic molecule PA based cause in the PA based cause two dimensional uh, organic inorganic hybrid ferroskite and such like some large spin pole coupling and volatile electric properties so some and uh, other things which can be used as a environmental friendly electric magnetic spintronics or magnetics device uh, so we synthesize it is PA2 monotetrachloride and PA2 copper tetrachloride and the PA2 cobalt tetrachloride single crystal and the uh, uh, Raman spectroscopy under the various external environment condition. In the PA2 monotetrachloride, there are five different phase under the pressure and some slightly change under the low temperature, the neat compound. And in the PA2 copper tetrachloride, there are four different phase under the pressure and uh, changing. Uh, color of crystal, which means there is suppression of the antenna distortion and the change, uh, change in orbital configuration. 
and the PA2 cobalt silicon chloride. Uh, this is not perovskite structure, but uh, metal organic hybrid zero dimensional structure. So four, di four different phase under the pressure and which is expected changing tetrahedral configuration. This three months experiment confirmed uh, some many new things, but uh, there are also many new things that we need some, some verified, especially the temperature experiment of uh, some PA2 copper tetrachloride and PA2 common tetrachloride. And uh, in the case of the PA2 copper tetrachloride, uh, which needs some um, to create some comfort with the verifying of the structure by XRD. So we need more experiment with the Rana spectroscopy and XRD and need more pitch measurement of physical property such as using like some neutral scattering or brillo measurement. So, so measurement and this is last slide in my uh, presentation. I want to thanks to Professor Pitali and Yanbi, also Dr. Tony, Stella and Dongjo, and Professor Pitong and Jana Meshi and all the Jesse Pars members. And thank you to the Thank you to the, uh, my advisor in the Korea, Professor Chung Mo and Jae Kim. And Fred, thank you for the, my research advice, Dr. Young Jae Yoo. Thank you so much. So, comment. <laughs> it's like a lot of things you did, but it's definitely a missing structure information on what's happening. For right now, you're just guessing what's going on. Yeah. yeah. So there could be some change in uh, organic structure yes. in your uh, upper uh, cations. Yes. There. Yeah, they may need the extra D uh, experiment. Yeah. Yeah. You definitely <laughs> need the uh, APS yeah. back. Right? <laughs> like, yeah. It, it could be done at the same time when you are doing Raman spectroscopy and you can do XRD, especially yes. if it's a single crystal, so you can immediately get the full the structure. Yeah. That was that I actually like that you observe the uh, color change. Yes. And uh, you didn't tell me, but like in our system, you can measure absorption, especially when you have a sample area and pressure medium, we can measure absorption and you can get the band gap. Mm -hmm. So that will be quite interesting to follow up yes. if there are any change in yes. the band gap of the material. Yes. Yes. But you can do it later. <laughs> <laughs> and one thing that's interesting with the uh, the copper is uh, when they go to the uh, the over above uh, thirty three GPA, it polymerized, and then when it goes back to the ambient condition, it shows uh, just one single uh, signal, which is uh, eight hundred wave number. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is uh, corresponding to the CC uh, single bond. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I saw that sometimes uh, on some Raman spectrum around sixteen hundred centimeters that is related to the. Uh, SP uh, two bonding. Yeah. So yeah, it's yeah possible. Yeah. Okay. So, so in the hydrostatic experiments, what's the uh, pressure medium? Oh, uh, every hydrostatic using the neon gas. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Neon. The structure is very open. I wonder whether yeah. you actually. Yeah. Neon can what, go. What's neon getting into the structure? Yes. yes. I think, but uh, uh, but now uh, yeah. we are avoiding the helium uh, gas. Yeah, the neon neon is usually yeah. bigger. So it's it's larger, yeah. Atoms, so, 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 yeah. Yeah. so, so we studied a similar uh, hybrid foreskite structure, also organic, uh, micro organic hybrid foreskite yeah. in the past with a uh, neon pressure here, uh, single crystal. And uh, to my knowledge, I think it's difficult for neon to diffuse into the crystal structure and structure. Mm. Yeah, it's, uh, the high temperature could. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, yeah, actually, I, I have another comment here. Yeah. I think since you are, some of your studies actually uh, transition metal or uh, young color distortion, yeah, I think uh, this kind of distortion is very sensitive to the not only new, I mean, uh, diffraction. You can also use a spectroscopy, like uh, actual oh. absorption, yes, to, to, to check it. Yes, and yes. We, yes. I think we can do some yes. kind of experiments here. What's actually on that? Yes. Perfect. Yes. Thank you. Everything okay. related to X ray. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, next speaker. Thank you so much. So, Suming Park from the uh, Hanyang University, and he's gonna. Uh,
We don't have much time, but uh, he will talk about the 10 or 15 uh, minutes talk uh, regarding uh, our bike class. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sumit Park, and I will be talking on my recent work on synthesis and measurement of our breast uh, state of our bike under high pressure and temperature. I synthesized the, the glass arbite using a Paris Edinburgh cell and conduct, conduct the Raman measurement, Raman measurement, increasing the pressure up to 20 kilopascal. First, I will explain about glass. Generally, solid have a crystal structure featuring both short and long range order, whereas liquid has an amorphous structure without long range order. And solid have a particle that that are fixed in that are fixed in position, maintaining a stable, stable shape, while liquid has a particles that are not, that are that can flow that can flow freely. So liquid shape is not fixed. Glass exhibits the solid, solid characteristic while maintaining an armor structure. This results in unique, unique features such as transparency, chemical resistance, and high and high compressive strength. These these features enable glass to to be utilized in a variety of applications, such as optical lens, safety glass, and laboratory containers. The formation of glass begins, begins during the cooling process of liquid. As the liquid gradually pours below its melting point, the crystalline structure starts to form, start to form around around the nucleation centers. However, if the liquid is definitely porous and cannot de develop crystal, crystal structure, it maintains its amorphous structure below the melting point and eventually transitioning into glass. Through this process, glass, glass develops unique qualities by blending features found in both solid and liquid. Arbite, sodium aluminum silicate, is a mineral in the plagioclasic per mineral group. This covers about 60% of Earth's crust and is widely spread through the volcanic activities. It plays a crucial role in in studying the earth geology, minerals, minerals and rocks, providing a variable insight in, into how minerals form in various geological environments. The local structure of our, our bike is tri triclinic with G equal four units per cell, characterized by chains of cent centric tetrahedral and this connected by octahedral chains sharing the edge. This structure, these structural features contribute to the unique, unique properties and behavior of carbide. Under high pressure and temperature, temperature conditions, silicate glass, including carbide, undergoes notable changes such as densification, Distance size preference and decreasing bonding angle and uh, modifications in the breath structure. This information, this information emphasizes the importance of arbite in the field of <coughs> geology and material science. It plays a crucial role in the understanding the geological history. This is my experiment method. 
I synthesize the Arbine class using a first Eden bubble spare and the press, subtracting it 6,000 6, PSI and 60, 50 degrees Celsius for seven hours. Despite our initial goal of producing transparent glass arbite, but this results in the quite translucent glass arbite. I loading these samples to the diamond ember cell by by non 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 hydrogen condition, and then conduct the Raman measurement. Pressure ranging from ambient to 20 gigapascal using the blue, green, red lasers. Notably, measurement, measurement with the green laser exhibits the highest resolutions. Crystalline arbite exhibits the distinct Raman mode associated with the metal, metal oxide and silicon oxide interactions. Bonding characteristics such as metal oxide bonding, silicon oxide bonding, and non-breaching non -breaching silicon bonding, including twisting, bending, and stretching. Plus arbite also demonstrates the unique Raman mode. Boson peak appears below 200 inverse centimeter and metal oxide silicon and oxide metal modes are observed in the 300 to 5, 500 inverse centimeter range. Silicate membered ring, like six, five, four, and three membered rings are observed, observed in the, observed below 600 inverse centimeter and two specific modes are present from 800 to 1,200 inverse centimeter. Q, Q species mode means Q species mode represents the number of breaching oxygen atoms, where Q0 means the individual silicate, and Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4 means the oxygen connection, the one oxygen, two oxygen, three oxygen, and four oxygen. This is my Raman measurement of arbite. Due, due to the strong, due to the strong fullness, it is hard to analyze the low low. It is hard to analyze the low data of arbite. So I removed the I removed the background to light red. During the compression. Except the boson peak below the 200 inverse centimeter, four Raman modes are blue shifted. In the, in the 800 to 1200 inverse centimeter range, there is Q mode represented, and at the 900 inverse centimeter, Q0 mode, Q0 mode decreases with the pressure, and then and then this disappearing at the 2.0 2 gigapascal. This means the disappearance of the individual silicate units within the glass. And in the range of 300 to 400 inverse centimeter range, it is the six membered and five membered ring. This, this intensity is decreased for as the in pressure increase. At the same time, 400 to 600, this two peaks is four member and three member drain, increase the intensity. This means, this means the flex of larger rings into the small, small ones under the pressures. Additionally, at the 8.5 gigapascal, and 364 six, inverse centimeter in here, the new peak appears, and 
the at the fourteen point three kilopascal, this peak becomes distinctly pronounced. This peak corresponds to the aluminum oxide. It means the transition in the bonding from silicon oxide to aluminum oxide. At this graph, the peaks, some peaks are moving, so I need to reload this sample and re, re measure. And to observe, to, to observe additional changes, sub, subsequent experiment with pressure exceeding 60 gigapascal are necessary. In addition to arbite, I try to measure the metallic glass, titanium, zirconium, nickel, silicon, and the two-dimensional two underbar material, iron, germanium, terrium samples. Unfortunately, the first result shows the full sample conditions, so I cannot measure more. I got new samples recently, but because of the time limit, I could only do some early test, and this is the test of my samples, the bulk, 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 bulk samples measurement. The titanium zirconium sample had a had good resolution with a blue laser, and the ion germanium shows the good resolution with the green lasers. This is my summary and picture work. I synthesized the arbite and conducted Rama measurement, applying pressures from ambient to 20 gigapascal. The result reveals that a reduction in the disorder related version peaks with increasing pressure. Additionally, the collapse of six and five numbered ring into four and three numbered ring disappear of the Q Q0 mode representing individual silicate and the transition and the transition from the silicon oxide bonding to aluminum oxide bonding were observed. Further exploration of this phenomenon associated subsequent high pressure experiment, high pressure experiment exceeding 60 gigapascal. Currently, I I'm the I'm the planning stage for the conducting high pressure gamma measurement of measurement using a green laser at the Hanyang University. And if given the opportunity for the additional research at GSE cars, I will I will synthesize the transparent brass arbite and perform the Rama measurements on titanium zirconium nickel silicon using the blue laser and low temperature Rama measurements to investigate the phase transition of ion germanium terium calculating temperature around 200 Kelvin. This is acknowledgement. I would like to express my grateful to Professor Vitari and Yang Bin and Dr. Tony Stali Dongjo and all of JC Card members for their valuable assistance and to my research advisor Yang Jae Liu and my advisor Professor Jae Yong Kim and Jong Mok Oh. Over the months of a heart, I have had an opportunity to run a great, uh, great years from diamond anvil mount into to the sample lobbying and lama measurement with lama measurement with sample synthesize. I grateful for the support from the GS cars teams. Thank you. So is there a reason for synthesizing the glass in the Paris Edinburgh cell rather than just doing it at atmospheric pressure you know, in, in a high temperature furnace? Uh, 
Pardon? <laughs> so you 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 synthesized the albite glass in the Paris Edinburgh cell. Yes. But it should be possible to synthesize at atmospheric pressure one bar in, in a furnace. Yes. Is is there a reason to do it at high pressure? Uh is temperature is the arbite melting temperature is one over the one thousand Kelvin. So I use the first Edinburgh cell. Okay. Yeah, there's a reason why some uh glass material is over sixteen hundred. Uh, example of like lacinite or acetate. Right. It has to go like 1800. Right. So we don't have a that kind of furnace right now. Uh, One day we're going to get the Dell Tech working. Yeah, Dell Tech. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But that doesn't go to 1800. It's it's in, in the, in the, no, but Albite doesn't need Albite. 1800. Yeah, yeah, Albite. It's much lower. So we are preparing. Uh, it's actually in the plans. So we're not preparing the sample. Yandri said making the mix. Right? Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I think and, the. I had another question. Maybe you should translate. So oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's easier. But when my understanding is when you compress in the diet, when you compress glasses, it's it's largely irreversible, right? That you can quench the high density phase yeah, to yeah. room pressure. Mm -hmm. um, it might be interesting if in the diamond cell, you could also heat it. And, you know, is it possible? Will it relax back to the structure that it had Initially at one bar. Sample 그 메테리얼들을 다시 어 리버서블하게 만들 수 있느냐 지금 이렇게 물어보시는데 그러면 대답을 어떻게 하냐면은 어그 레이저 히팅으로 할수 있다고 얘기를 해주시면 될것 같아요. 그냥 계획이 있다고 그런 거. 알바이트를 레이저 히팅으로 만드는 계획. 어 그런 게 있다고 한번 트라이 해보겠다. <laughs> Arbeit, the melting point is 1,320 1, degrees Celsius. It, right. can, it can be made by the laser heating in the diamond and cell. So we can, we can, we can synthesize the arbite by the laser heating. Right. But it would be because you, you don't actually need to melt it, right? You need to take it back above the glass transition temperature, mm -hmm. presumably, to let it relax. Yeah. yeah. That's why we yeah. uh, collaborate with the uh, uh, Hanyang University. We, and we get the new uh, device, enclosure device. Yeah. yeah so yeah, we'll do it. Yeah. Right, so we'll do both uh, Raman and prion measurements to swallow what's the uh, transition happening in the glass. But usually what you ask, it's like at higher temperature, when you will decompress, higher density, it will be even higher for yeah. the glass. That's what we observe typically, if it's still not crystallized. Yeah. So none, none has a lot of data actually in the multi anvil. Yeah. Compressing glass at different temperatures and doing the other different thing. Yeah. They come, but, come out usually not very predict predictive or predictable. Okay. So things going kind of crazy. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So this one here is actually. It's possible it will translate to uh, so I think it's on one of the following series it might be translated even to uh J Dive as a course. It's possible to put in those or crystallize in the crystals, yeah, strong yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. If it's uh too high then yes. Yeah. So we actually try with a Jedi and then the uh the way uh the peak position is a little bit different. Yeah. Uh because of uh our body. Has a little bit more silicate. Yeah, it uh stay in the lower wave wave number yeah. than Jedi. Yeah. 
I mean, the, the class density is not a state function. So, so I have a question. I didn't quite understand the, the last conclusion. You said the SIO bound transforms to ALO bound. I, I think uh, no, he that. maybe uh, miss it combined with the uh, ALO and the SIO. Right. Bound. Okay. Okay. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. yeah. Maybe you can uh, trans translate it. Ah, I can't remember. I remember that the A, the S I O bond is different. They transfer it. But then, but the word is not the same. A L O bond and S I O bond are together combined. Yeah, you understood. Okay. And then just the beginning of the work. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Just here. So nice. Yeah. So very good. Yeah, they did a really nice job and they did uh, accomplish a lot. Yeah, the number of spectra collected and when you plot, you can see all the transition very smooth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah, I wish we could do it high temperature and more low temperature stuff. Of course, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nice job. Yeah. Thank you so much.